This film is brought to you by New York Life and its over 11,000 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. The Washington Redskins found out early in 1988 that the only thing tougher than winning a championship is defending it. In a Monday night matchup against New York, Washington held the Giants to a minus two yards on the ground and took a 13-3 halftime lead when Doug Williams delivered the Redskins' first touchdown pass of the year to Ricky Sanders. But uncharacteristic Redskins mistakes allowed the Giants to score 21 unanswered points in the second half to win 24-20. As champions of Super Bowl XXII, everyone aimed to beat the Redskins. But the factors that did Washington the most damage were mistakes and injuries. Still, on the season's final weekend, they battled the AFC champions to the wire. Perfect pass by Doug on that one. Snap, Williams, play action fake. Looking for Sanders, going deep. Got him down there, Sanders at the goal line. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. With seconds remaining, Washington lined up for the winning field goal. The spots the 19-yard line, a 29-yard field goal attempt for Chip Low Miller. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is up long enough. Hits the upright, no good. Holy cow. The Bengals went on to win in overtime, writing the final chapter to the Redskins season. But despite a year of disappointment, the Redskins played with heart, with not one but two quarterbacks displaying the mark of a winner. There was the youthful exuberance that promises a winning future and veteran leaders who displayed the refined skill of a champion. For every great franchise in every sport, there are always low points. And with a talented organization like the Redskins, they are only temporary. The Redskins won Super Bowl 17, lost Super Bowl 18, won again in 22. The Redskins and their fans know the team will rebound in 89. As an aggressive approach to the free agent market and draft, have again provided high expectations for Coach Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins. Over the past six years, no team is better playing after Monday night games than the Redskins. Joe Gibbs' teams are 13-1 in Sunday games following Monday nights. But that record was severely tested in Washington's home opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers. For the whole ball game, man, I start kicking their butts from right now, all right? Let's go, babe. Right now, let's go. Back he goes, sets, looking for the pass again, going deep, lobs it up. He's got Ricky Sanders at the 20. He's at the 10, 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Washington twice rallied from nine-point deficits in the second half. Rookie running back Jamie Morris and the Redskins rolled up 515 total yards, their highest regular season total in five years. The Redskins' final drive led to the Steelers' one-yard line, and with 12 seconds left, rookie kicker Chip Lowmiller decided the outcome. Kick is up. Kick is good. Yes, sir. He gets my vote. Miller gets our vote. Low Miller got all of Washington's vote in a close contest won at the wire by a point. When the Redskins met Philadelphia in week three, the offensive line welcomed tackle Jim Lachey from California. And Lachey responded by neutralizing Eagles all-pro defender Reggie White. The Redskins' counter-gap series was as effective as ever as Washington broke on top 14-0, then held on to win their second straight, 17-10. Jamie Morris is in the ball game now. He gets his first carry right here. Left side, scoops through. He's through the 10. He's gone. Wayne Clay, Jamie Morris behind May and Lachey. 
On September 25th, there was a new face at quarterback. With Doug Williams recovering from an emergency appendectomy, Mark Rippon was called on to lead the Redskins. Well, I think Mark's been around here long enough to understand uh, what you have to go through as a quarterback in, in certain situations, and he didn't panic, and he went in and did the job. Looking, looking, right down the middle. He's got Monk on a slant. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. A great pass and great weight by Rippon. the snap, drops straight back, looking to his left, fires it out over the top, got it complete at the 10. Rippon's debut was bittersweet. Over 300 yards passing and three touchdowns. 57 seconds left to go. But the Cardinals denied him the chance to win with less than a minute remaining. Scrambles to the near side, going to get tackled from behind, fumbles the football, picked up by a Cardinal. He's going all the way to the end zone. I know there's a lot of expectations for the quarterback here, so uh, I think from my standpoint, there is a lot of pressure, but uh, I always had a coach in high school used to tell me that pressure is a chance to prove yourself, and uh, given a pressure situation, uh, that's what I look forward to, an opportunity and a chance to go out and show what I'm made out of. Mark Rippon's supporters include head coach Joe Gibbs and Doug Williams, who remained on the sideline while recuperating from surgery. These two men were instrumental in helping Rippon over the rough spots. And there were plenty of them against the visiting New York Giants. Rippon going to get sacked for the first time today. Fumbled the ball, picked up by Harry Carson. He's going to the 20 and he's pulled out there. Train two, two long cover, I'm going in. Encouragement. That is what Rippon could count on, not only from his head coach, but from Doug Williams. Excellent out of 10. In a league full of quarterback controversies, Theirs is a mature relationship. Their goals are not to prove who's better, but simply to win. Still, Rippon struggled. But as he learned earlier in his career, pressure is a chance to prove yourself. Rippon seized the opportunity, rallying the Redskins to within a point on the strength of two touchdown passes to Ricky Sanders. Play action fake. Oh, he's Kelvin got a Bryant. touchdown. Got him wide open. It's Sanders at the 10, the 5. Down, Washington Redskins. Yeah, Here's in motion here near side. Heavy rush up the middle. Rippon finds the man at the goal line. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Redskins' mistakes on their final two possessions left Washington a point short and dropped them out of a tie for first place in the NFC East. I could be 2-0 and as a starting quarterback, yet I'm 0-2. It's uh, disappointing for me because I'm the leader of this team, and I feel like, uh, in some ways, I've let the team down. I can't do anything about it. My main concern right now is for the next four or five weeks. I know the job's been Doug's, and uh, he's done a great job with it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be a, a gracious player and, and a team player, and whatever they ask me to do, I am going to do. By week six, Washington looked to get back into first place against the Cowboys. The passing game was still on target no matter who was pulling the trigger. Mark Rippon became the NFC's top-rated quarterback with three more touchdown passes. The first to sore-shouldered Gary Clark, number 84. Rippon could hardly be asked to carry the running load as well, although he certainly seemed up to the task. On that Sunday, Kelvin Bryant went all the way at running back and responded with 200 total yards and three touchdowns. This is the Redskins rock Dallas 35-17. When healthy, Kelvin Bryant gave every indication that he may well be the NFL's most versatile running back. When he is running on all cylinders, Bryant draws a crowd wherever he goes. And in 1988, this slashing, spinning top of a runner became the Redskins' leading rusher. His ability to come out of the backfield and go deep is unsurpassed. And sure hands like his are normally the property of wide receivers.
As the Redskins look to 1989, they will rely on the truly special skills of Kelvin Bryant. In mid-October, the Red Hot Cardinals arrived at RFK on the heels of four straight wins. But as one ex-president might have said, the streak stops here. It's a safety. Raven Caldwell. And the first two points of the day for the Washington Redskins. Linebacker Raven Caldwell lit the fuse as the Redskins exploded for 33 unanswered points. Sets up. Good protection. Going to the end zone. Got Monk in the backside. Diving catch. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Like Art Monk, Joe Gibbs has worked his share of magic in Washington. But nothing could match the magic trick executed by Gary Clark in the Cardinals end zone. In the end zone. Got a man. Almost picked off. Hot. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Gary oh. Clark steals. Great job, Wait, steal, man. Wait, steal. Aki goes to pass, sets up, fires it over the middle. He's got Monk at the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. High formation, looks like run. Here goes the pass. Over the middle, Gary Clark at the 45, 40, down to the 35. Against the New Orleans Saints, Doug Williams took over for an injured Mark Griffin and engineered a stirring comeback that ended in a Redskins victory with 47 seconds left. It's good! Okay. Miller from 23 out wins the game! Washington's final celebration of the season occurred in Philadelphia in week 14. There, they showcased the emotional pitch that stretched their talent level even though they were out of the playoff hunt. In the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Washington Redskins. It's Ricky Sanders in the end Washington game. took a 7-3 lead, only to fall behind by 12 points. But their resiliency was evident in the fourth and final period. All right, let's see what they do. Run to the right, deliver the ball. Run? Nope. They're going to run to the, the right, pass. deliver there it is. the ball. The there zone. it is. Touchdown, touchdown. Washington Redskins. Doug Williams with a touchdown pass to Terry Orr. The spot is the 35, a 45-yard field goal attempt against the wind for the football game. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. Is it enough? It's good! It's good! Low Miller from 45 yards out. The Redskins mob onto the field. While it wasn't the Super Bowl, the victory showed the Redskins' character of the 1980s. The character that will show itself again in the upcoming season. It's been said that a pro football team is no better than its coaching staff. And no NFL team has assembled a stronger group of assistants. Joe, step inside. You with me? For eight seasons, Joe Bugle has developed and molded the Redskins' highly regarded offensive line. Bugle is one of two assistant head coaches. The other, defensive coordinator Richie Pettibone, who continues to guide the fortunes of a perennially tough defense. These men provide consistency and continuity to a staff that welcomes the return of special teams coach Wayne Severe. Severe built the Redskins special teams into the NFL's best in 1986 and has plenty of material at hand to put this unit back on top. Aggressive youngsters like Kurt Govea, Reggie Branch, Dave Harbour, and Greg Manuski improved throughout the season, but they could not overcome the instability of four punters, two snappers, two holders, and six punt returners. Wayne Sevier will be back to oversee the Washington special teams and restore past glory with the kind of results expected from every Redskin. All they want is results. That's all they want. That's all you got to do is get him. Yeah. Three-time Pro Bowler Daryl Green is the model for all players in the Redskin defensive backfield. 
hitters like Todd Bowles, Alvin Walton, and safety Clarence Vaughn. Injuries plagued both interception leader Barry Wilburn and cornerback Brian Davis, number 34. But both will be back at full strength in 1989, as will Alvin Walton, number 40. In just three seasons, Walton has established himself as one of the hardest hitters of this unit and led the team in tackles for the second straight year. Every secondary relies upon the pressure applied by the defensive line. And Washington's defensive line is among the finest in the NFL. Defensive ends Charles Mann and Dexter Manley balance the Redskin line, and both have earned the respect of the opposition. Manley, number 72, will look to maintain his position as the team's all-time sack leader. And Charles Mann, number 71, will be coming off his second straight trip to the Pro Bowl. In 1989, the Redskins bade farewell to defensive tackle Dave Butts, number 65, who established a team record by playing in 203 games. Sometimes the forgotten man on the Washington line, Darrell Grant, number 77, will live in the memory as the Redskins' only defensive lineman to register over 100 tackles in a season. Dean Hamill and Marcus Cook, number 74, provide depth to a defensive line whose future is as bright as their past, with the addition of youngsters like Tracy Rocker, Fred Stokes, and Curtis Maxey. The Redskins boast both experience and depth at the linebacking positions. And throughout most of the decade, the Redskins have counted on the reliability of both Neil Olkowitz, number 52, Mel Kaufman, number 55, and Monty Coleman, number 51, to provide stability to the linebacking unit. In just his second year, Raven Caldwell, number 50, came into his own with four quarterback sacks. The Redskins' most promising long-range acquisition remains number 58, Wilbur Marshall. Marshall applied his considerable skills from the right inside position and became a force against the run and the pass. Pass coverage has become as important as run support for a linebacker, and Marshall leaves nothing to be desired. Wilbur Marshall, yet another example of the Washington Redskins' promising future. No unit saw greater changes than the Redskins' offensive line. Injuries and the addition of All-Pro Jim Lachey led to a realignment that saw seven different starting lineups over the course of the season. The right combination began to gel in the final five games. Jacoby, Graham, Bostic, Raleigh McKenzie, Jim Lachey, and first-time Pro Bowler Mark May allowed just two sacks, and their 24 total sacks allowed were the fewest since 1972. This kind of protection allowed Redskins quarterbacks to set their sights on a formidable group of tight ends. They include Don Warren, number 85, and Craig McEwen, number 32, who doubles as an H-back in Washington's sophisticated offensive scheme. These two men will get stiff competition for playing time from big play threat Terry Orr, number 87, and from free agent Mike Tice, the former University of Maryland standout, who set the season record for touchdowns by a tight end while with the Seattle Seahawks. While Tice aids the passing game, Two other new faces figure prominently in the rushing attack. One is Gerald Riggs, a bull-like force who is second to only Eric Dickerson in rushing since joining the NFL in 1982. Unlike Dickerson, 
Riggs prefers to go through tacklers rather than around them. This is a man who knows where he wants to go. Complimenting Riggs is Ernest Biner, who impressed the Redskins firsthand with his ability as a runner and receiver. with Kelvin Bryant and Jamie Morris, the Washington rushing game can come from every direction. If the Redskins struggled in 1988, you wouldn't know it from the strength of the passing game, number one in the NFC. This is a team that is truly armed and dangerous. Doug Williams and Mark Griffin combined to set club season records with over 4,100 yards and 33 touchdown passes. The Redskins rely on establishing their running game with multiple offensive alignments. When it can create one-on-one -on -one coverages on wideouts, the Redskins look for a big pass to the finest trio of wide receivers in the NFL. One of them is three-time All-Pro Art Monk, number 81. Monk starts the 1989 season needing only four catches to move into the top 10 on the NFL's all-time receiving list. While Art Monk was a number one draft pick, Gary Clark came up the hard way as a free agent. Signed in 1985, Clark has averaged 65 catches and over 1,000 yards per year. The third member is number 83, Ricky Sanders. Sanders got his first national attention in Super Bowl XXII. His famous record-breaking performance was Sanders' way of saying, the best is yet to come. In 1988, Sanders was Washington's most productive receiver, with 73 receptions for 1,148 yards. He also became the first Redskin in 21 years to catch 12 touchdown passes in a season. In only his third season in Washington, Ricky Sanders was named the team's most valuable player. The Redskins are blessed with many talented players and coaches. A well-respected sports organization, which has been a dominant team in the 1980s and will continue to be in the next decade. 1989 will indeed be a season of high expectations. This video is part of a complete blockbuster lineup of NFL films capturing pro football's greatest plays and biggest heroes with crunches, follies, highlights, and Super Bowl hits, plus new releases each season. We've got action-packed videos of every superstar team in the NFL. Call 1-800-NFL-TAPE now for a free catalog and order your NFL hit today. Or look for NFL films at your nearby video store. The season's never over with NFL Films and Fox Hills Video.